Velocity does more than just tell us how fast we're going. It actually tells us in what direction we're going that particular speed. Velocity gives us direction and a magnitude. It says this is your rate of change of position and you're going in this direction as you go that rate of change of position. So for example, consider a bouncing ball. Here we have a red bouncing ball on the ground. For no apparent reason, this ball is going to fly up into the air. So, when the ball is about right here, let's say about one second has gone by, it's a very slow ball. So it started off at zero, zero. After one second, let's say it's like right here. Then, let's say the ball goes right here, starts slowing down a little bit because gravity is beginning to pull on it. So let's say at time t equals two, it's like right here. And let's say at time t equals three, the ball reaches its peak. And let's put that right here. And then on the way down, the ball starts gaining speed. So the ball goes a little bit faster this way, but still slow because it's just started going. And let's say that goes right here. So, and then a little bit faster further down. And finally, the ball is back on the ground. So we can note this path over time as the following parabolic arc. Now, as the ball is going up, which direction is it going? Well, I just said it. It's going up. It's going in the positive direction direction. Now consider that this right here is the graph of the position of the ball over time t. Now if we look at where the ball is going up, take a look at the slope over here. The slope on this side is positive. Everywhere in fact on this side the slope is positive. And velocity is the derivative of position. So this slope right here represents the velocity of the ball at this particular moment. So what we can see happening is we can see that the ball starts off going much, much faster down here with its initial velocity. At time one, it's going a bit slower. At time two, it's going a bit slower, like right here. And finally, at time three, where it reaches its maximum point, the velocity is zero. Why is the velocity zero at its maximum point? Well, think about a ball going up into the air. It starts off very fast, slows down, slows down. It gets the peak. It stops for a brief moment in midair. And then it starts coming back down. And as it comes back down, our velocity starts off a bit slow but negative. You'll notice that the velocity is now negative. This is the negative direction. Why? Because the ball's coming down. At time t equals one, two, three, four, five, our velocity is a bit more now. It's about right here. And finally, at time t equals six, the ball finally hits the ground again. The velocity matches that of when it first started out because of the symmetry of a parabola except it's going in the negative direction now. So our, our velocity goes from positive to zero to negative. Not only does velocity tell us what direction the ball is going, you can see the velocity is positive in the beginning, so the ball is going up, and the velocity is negative towards the end, so the ball is going down. Not only does it tell us that, but it also tells us where the ball reached its maximum height. In order for the ball to reach its maximum height, it had to go in the positive direction and then go in the negative direction. It couldn't go any more positive. It had to change directions. At that moment, when it changed directions, what was the velocity? It was zero. So we can use this fact wisely. 
The fact is that we have reached our maximum position at time t equals 3 because velocity changes from positive going up to negative going down. If ever you want to show that you have a maximum in position, all you have to do is show that your velocity goes from positive to negative. And we'll talk more about that later when we talk about maxes and mins of functions. But you'll notice here that the velocity, positive to negative, means that you have a max. What if the velocity, or if the position function had looked like this? Well, consider that at this moment, your ball would start off going in the negative direction because your slope here is negative. And then you would have a min right here where the ball changes direction. And finally, go back in the positive direction on the right hand side. So here, your ball would be going down, would hit zero, and then go back up again. This isn't like bouncing a ball. If you bounce a ball, you are increasing your velocity as it goes down, and then you have a uh, non-differentiable uh, corner at the very bottom. Now this is this would be like a, a feather falling harder at first and then slowing down before it hit the ground, which makes absolutely no sense at all, but this is what this uh, function is telling us. And of course, this would be a minimum down here, the minimum, because it was going in the negative direction, and then it changed directions to go in the positive direction. So this is where we had a min. So if your velocity changes from negative to positive, you have a minimum in your position.